welcome no matter what you believe, welcome no matter what you do not believe, welcome no matter what you have done, and welcome no matter what you have left undone. Welcome no matter who you are, and welcome no matter who you love, because this is Christchurch, and in Christchurch, everyone is welcome. Pentecost. We're back here in the sanctuary at GSP. It's great to be here. It's been very hot, so the uh, attire is a little informal here, but uh, it's wonderful to be at this organ here for Pentecost Sunday. And uh, I'm going to play some Bach this morning. It's an organ prelude, and it's based on the uh, Gregorian chant, Veni Creata Spiritus, Come Holy Spirit, Come. So perfect for Pentecost, and um, great to be here. Enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm George Theodorakopoulos, the baritone section lead at Trinity St. Paul. I'd invite you to sing with me on the chant of Come Holy Spirit, as well as on the refrain of She Flies On, and as well as on the benediction. Thank you and enjoy. Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, from heaven Sancte Spiritus, Veni 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 Sancte Spiritus, Disperse the shadows over us, Renew and strengthen your peoples, Veni Sancte Spiritus, 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 Shower upon us the seven gifts of your grace. Be the light of our hands, O Carlos. Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus. Veni Sancte Spiritus, 
Veni Sancte Spiritus. The Gospel reading for today is Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians? Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Peter addresses the crowd. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Happy Pentecost. So today we heard about uh, the disciples meeting afraid in a room on the 50th day and it was the day of harvest. So I think Thanksgiving, maybe the turkey's in the oven. They're sitting there. It's early in the morning, just like now. But here's the thing, they're frightened. And let's remember who the disciples are all of them in one way, shape, or form have been less than completely faithful, less than completely strong in their faith about who Jesus was and is. Peter, who's the star of this particular section of Acts, is particularly a problem. Remember, he denied Jesus three times to save his own skin. Yet here, he's a hero. This is, with Pentecost, the birth of the Christian church. And as such, it's somewhat problematic. It has this glorious side to it. You know, speaking in various tongues, diversity, uh, courage in the face of oppression from an occupying power, Rome still and of course the hypocrisy of the religious officials. There's courage and there's this wonderful apocalyptic prophecy. You know, you'll prophesy, you'll dream dreams, a, a utopian vision of the future of the church. And then there's kind of a dark side 
We know who's saying this, Peter the coward. We know when they're speaking in a diversity of tongues, this could also mean the birth of the imperialist church, the church of the colonizer, the church of the evangelism, meaning everybody should be Christian church, the church of the right. Uh, let's talk about that for a minute. There's an old joke coming out of Poland, and I'm gonna paraphrase it, goes more or less uh, the way of this. And this is of course before Glasnost. Uh, we don't have any power or electricity. We don't have any food. We don't have housing and we don't have jobs, but thank God we have socialism. Of course, it's a joke. I guess the Christian equivalent of that would be coming out of the Christian right. We're racist, we hate queers, we don't like people of other faiths. Uh, we're all about success and making money, but thank God we're Christian. So what is a Christian? What should be the Christian church? What should be its basis? Certainly on the plus side, we see this inclusion, everyone, no matter what language, where you're from, what you believe, don't believe, what you've done, left undone, who you are, who you love, everyone is welcome in Christ Church. Profoundly Christian coming out of this passage from Acts. I think here of the birth of the United Church of Canada in 1925, this incredible moment hundreds, thousands of people when we were the church of the nation and we came together uniting different aspects of the Protestant faith. Isn't that thing good? Yeah, but there's also a shadow side. Why? Why did they come together in 1925? Well, part of the motivation, and let's be honest, was the threat from Roman Catholicism that they saw all these Roman Catholics coming in to settle the prairies, you know, from Eastern Europe, to do the hard work of building our country from Italy and the rest of Europe. There was a fear there. What if they all come in and take over? You know, it's interesting um, when you look back at that moment and you see what sprung from it. Again, both the Church of Empire, the church where the Prime Minister of Canada would check with the moderator of the United Church of Canada as to opinions because they were a gauge of where most Canadians, certainly most white Canadians' privilege were at. Uh, the church, the residential schools, an incredible stain on our history, which we're still living out. And here today, I can't help but think of the death of Regis, that young woman in this neighborhood who fell from her balcony. There was police involvement there. We're still searching into it, but the demand is there, the demand for justice for racialized communities. Our government has just stopped moving forward on their uh, investigation into the missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Why? That's so necessary. So that church, the church of power, uh, the church of privilege, and then there's the other church within the United Church of Canada, there's a church of inclusion, the church that ordained the first openly trans woman, and that was Cindy Bourgeois. Cindy, we love you, coming into Pride Month. The church that is racially diverse, the church that welcomes everyone, the church that really has and does speak the languages of many different countries, the church that at its best I've always said is the best expression of inclusive Christianity in this country still, and still the largest. And the church that now during COVID worships like this, proving we like those early disciples at Pentecost don't even need a building. We don't need a structure. Wherever two or more are gathered together, that's where the church is. And even if you're alone, that's where Christ is. So Christ of the dispossessed, Christ of the coward, Christ as those with limitations, Christ as those who are being hunted by the occupied power, that is Christ. Or the church later of Constantine, the church of power or privilege, our choice, our church.
come sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun. On a journey just begun, she flies on. And in the passage of her flight, her song rings out through the night. Full of laughter, full of fright, she flies on. Silent waters rocking on the morning of our birth, like an empty cradle waiting to be filled. And from the heart of God, the Spirit moved upon the earth, like another breathing life into a child. Many were the dreamers. Two eyes were given sight when the Spirit filled their dreams with life and form. Deserts turned to gardens, broken hearts found new delight, and then down the ages still she grew on. She comes sailing on the wind, her wings flashing in the sun. She came, a spirit roughly calling in the dark. The promise of a child of peace who reigns would never end. Mary sang the spirit song within her heart. Flying to the river, she waited circling by. Prayers of the People, May 31st, 2020. Dear Great Spirit of Love and Justice, which pervades and provides, hear our prayer. Dear Gracious and Giving God, we come to you now with glad hearts overflowing like water. The glory of your creation unfolds itself before us every morning. As we watch the light stream through our windows, landing softly on whatever green thing it can find, we remember that the greatest blessings, light, water, plants, may often go unnoticed in the busy of every day. Thank you also for those people who go unnoticed, farm workers, cleaners, garbage collectors, those whose labors we enjoy are a blessing unto us. Let us seek to be a blessing unto them. Thank you, God, for the ingenious spark within humans that seeks to invent and create. I don't know how many times you have been addressed via video chat before. Let us glory in our ability to learn and create. Let us also remain humble in our knowing so that our creation honors your world. Loving God, listen to us and hear us now in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, 
Hear our prayer and in your love answer. Dear just and merciful God, dear mother of our world, we come before you with hearts troubled with the weak sorrows. We think of our brothers, sisters, and siblings in privately owned long-term care homes. We think of the cruel swath COVID-19 has cut through our communities and the greed and indifference of the rich and powerful who profit from the crisis. We pray for those who seek justice from the state and the police. We pray for justice and for the strength and courage to insist on its speedy arrival. We pray for the safety and power of all those whom your son held dear, the poor, the sick, sex workers, strangers, migrants, the reviled and the despairing. Where may we find ourselves instruments of your justice? Loving God, speak to us now in the silence of our hearts. Dear God of everyday things, hear our prayer. We pray for today for those who we hold dear. If they are far, let our longing hearts be comforted with the knowledge that though they may be far from us, they remain near to you. If they are near to us, let us be kind and patient and gentle with each other this week. Although we see each other a lot these days, let us see each other each day with fresh eyes of love and compassion as you see us. We pray that we may be still and grounded in the deep wells of your love, even as our week fills with sorrows and tribulations of this strange moment. That we may see beyond today's pains to the great bounty of your world and the great possibilities for healing and justice within it. Loving God, speak to us now in the silence of our hearts. pray for particular individuals who we name now. Sarah Bionis Clark, still recovering from COVID. George Floyd's family in the aftermath of another police-involved death. Racialized communities and indigenous communities found the inquiry into missing and murdered indigenous women has been postponed. And Reverend John Locke Kim. Conscious of our connection to people of faith across the world, we pray for the church. We pray with the church in Lesotho, Namibia, South Africa, and Swaziland. God, you have examined us and know us. You know everything we do. From far away, you understand all our thoughts. You see us, whether we are confessing or denying you. Even before we speak, you already know what we will say. You are all around us on every side. You protect us with your power. Your knowledge of us is too deep, for you knew us before we were born, and is beyond our understanding. It is very dangerous to serve you in this world, but where can we go to escape from being the instrument of your peace? What far place can we flee to without confessing you? If we were to withdraw ourselves into neutrality, you would be there. If we were to go to our offices to hide behind our typewriters, you would be there. If we were to take refuge in the furthest country away from the oppression of your people, you would be there to remind us of what we of what we promised you. We could ask the darkness of our pain and humiliation to cover us, or the light of your love in our lives to turn into darkness. But even the night of our suffering would dissolve in the light of your presence. You created in us your image, you created us in your image, and loved us even before our mothers conceived us. We praise you. What you do is so wonderful and above all human understanding. Examine us, O God, and change our minds. Test us and clean our thoughts. Start the revolution in our lives. Create in us anew and guide us in the everlasting way. Amen. Blah, blah.
blessing of God go before you. May her grace and peace abound. May her spirit live within you. May her love.